Hey guys, so this is a quick editing video on how I turned the raw image on the left into the fully edited image on the right. So let's jump into Lightroom and see what we have. So here's our raw image. I'm just gonna quickly talk you through my settings for this roller that I shot. Um, so as you can see, we've got a shutter speed of one over 25 f-stop of 5 and ISO 160 so it was kind of like late afternoon kind of a cloudy day and um, so I got a 1 over 25 shutter speed to kind of get that blur in the road but also trying to keep the car sharp so I shot it on kind of burst shutter mode so let's get into the editing so I'm pretty happy with the exposure I think maybe the sky is blown out a bit so let's start with the highlights let's drop those into around here I think there's some detail in the shadows we can bring back. Yep, right there is good. And let's drop the blacks. If you wanna check your levels, if you hold option on a Mac and just drop the blacks back. As soon as you start seeing blue dots, that's when the blacks are kind of peaking. You're losing details in the black. So as soon as I start seeing the blue dots, I know I'm good. Let's check the whites. Okay, there's already white spots there. So I can kind of just bring it back a little bit in the whites. So that's just the basic adjustments there in the tone. Um, I like to add some texture, a bit of clarity, and let's see if we add some dehaze. So when you add dehaze, that kind of naturally increases the contrast, which I think works for this image, but you might need to bring the contrast back a bit um, if, or just reduce the dehaze, the amount you added. Vibrance just affects the colors, obviously the vibrance of the colors. I tend to use the vibrance more than the saturation. Um, I just think it affects the colors nicer, so let's increase that. Maybe that's a bit much. Let's go for about 10. Looks good. Now onto the tone curve. Pretty simple. What I like to do is just do like a basic S curve. Uh, so let's see how that affects. I usually add four points. So just on each third of these are the highlights, these are our mid tones, these are our shadows. So first thing I like to do is just give this a bit of a lift. Sorry, just raise the blacks a little. So I don't want to go too much you lose all the detail so if we just do a slight lift of the darks let's see if we have the midtones i think we'll pop the midtones just a little bit highlights let's see they're already pretty blown out so i don't want to drop them i might even drop them a bit here and then drop the highlights another little bit to stop them from clipping so not a traditional s curve but it works for for this image so play around with your own image but I think usually these three points and maybe an extra one down here always works pretty well. Then getting into our colors, start with the hue. It's mainly like the greens and the yellows that I'm focusing on here, the trees. So let's see if we move the yellows maybe to the left, that creates more like an autumn look. To the right, it just moves it, pushes it more towards the green. So I'm gonna keep it to the left, kind of make those yellows a bit more orange. Same with the greens, let's play around with them. It's really just seeing what you like. I'm going to keep them a bit to the left as well. And I'm pretty happy with everything else. Not too many colors going on. Um, let's go for a saturation. Saturation, one thing I do want to drop immediately is the aquas. You can't really see a huge difference, but if you see in the front of the car here, as I move the aquas up and down, there's a slight difference. So I just want to get rid of those. Yellows, again, I don't want to desaturate completely. Sometimes I like to blast it to 100 to see where the colors are actually lying. Um, so it's mostly obviously in the trees and a bit on the ground. So I just want to bring that back. Maybe not too much at all, desaturate. Similar with the greens. I don't want it too greens. I don't want it distracting from the car. So I think I'm happy with where the greens are. I'll leave that. Blues, let's see where they are. So a lot in the car and a bit in the sky. So I don't obviously want to blast it to 100. Maybe that here pop the blues just a little bit and luminance i'm going to leave that's fine then for my color grading a kind of go-to one i like to do is 220 hue in the shadows saturation 10 so it makes the shadows a bit more blue in the highlights i like to go 35 saturation 10 it warms up the highlights a little bit and then as far as my mid-tones i don't usually change them unless i feel i really need to I just play around with the, the brightness of the mid-tones, so maybe I'll increase them just a little bit there. Then in the balance side of things, you can either bring it towards the blue or bring it towards the warm. I think I'm happy enough, maybe a bit more warm because it was in autumn, and um, so I want to kind of keep that warmth of it. Let's see, blue, yeah, no, a bit more warm. 
And then last thing I want to do just on this page is the sharpening. So if I hold option, say if we just reset the sharpening to what it was, if I hold option and then touch the mask, everything that's white is being sharpened at the moment. So I obviously don't want to sharpen everything. So this is still way too much. I don't want to sharpen trees, there's clouds, anything like that. I really just want to get the outline of the car. Maybe some of the trees is okay. But the outline of the car, the kind of important lines, I'm happy with that and I can increase the sharpening just a little bit. Perfect. So that is our base kind of edit and then we get into the fun part which is the masks. So the first mask I am going to do is a linear gradient. I'm just going to bring it up from the bottom to darken the road. This just brings focus to the car. I'll reduce the exposure. Not too much because I'm going to add a few more masks later on. But there is good. Similarly, I think the sky is still a bit too bright, so I'm going to bring that down from the sky and just slightly reduce the exposure. Not too much at all. Maybe about there. If I do too much, it kind of has that stormy cloud look, which can, can look cool, but I just prefer it a bit more natural. Maybe about here is good. And I think for the sky, I want it to be a bit more blue. So again, with this mask, if I hit O just to see where the mask is hitting, I'm going to make it a bit more blue as well. Excellent. Another mask I'm going to add, again, a linear mask from the ground. I want to affect the clarity of the road because I really want to bring out the lines in the road to make it that roller really pop. So I'm going to do no gradient on this mask at all. I'm just going to pop it straight up here to the road. So it's affecting everything below this line at 100%. So I'm going to pop the clarity in the road and you can see the effect it has. So if I go to 100, you see every single little line, which is a bit much for me, but maybe around somewhere like 60 is good. But now if I hit O, you can see this is also affecting this bottom part of the car, which I don't want. I just want it affecting the road. So I'm going to take subtract and hit select subject. And you see what that does. It just affects the road. So I remove the subject from the mask. So it's only affecting the road. And it does usually a pretty pretty good job, so I'm happy enough with that. I'm gonna add another mask, and it's gonna be a subject mask. So it's just gonna be affecting the car itself. Might up the exposure a little bit, see how that looks. Not too much, maybe 15. And contrast again, a little bit more contrast. Shadows, let's see if I can bring back. I'm gonna be careful with shadows in a black car, because if you bring them up too high, it looks really bad, it looks unnatural. So just take them to a point where it looks still a bit natural but you get some details maybe in the grill and whites and blacks I'm pretty happy with might just drop the blacks just slightly just because it is a black car and I'm gonna add some clarity then so again play around with how much clarity you like Again, up to 100 looks way too unnatural even 40 looks really unnatural so I think somewhere about 15 is good you want it to look kind of subtle, like a heightened reality. You still want it to look natural, but a bit more um, aggressive. So I think that is happy enough. I'll put the mask on and off. So that was it off and the mask on. So it just makes the car pop a bit more. The last one I want to do is just traditional kind of vignette around the car. I like to position it so that it goes with the direction of the car more here invert it so it's still affecting kind of the edges so you can either make the mask bigger or I just like to drop the feather a bit so it's not affecting the car again I'm going to drop the exposure not too much maybe about there is good and I'm pretty happy with that edit I think if there's anything else I need to do it would be just removing the license plate so I can take the AI remove tool here in Lightroom. It's gotten really, really good. Photoshop used to be the best way to do it, but now they've made it so quick in Lightroom that I often just do it in Lightroom now. So you just select the license plate and click remove. See if it does a good job. See how that works. It worked pretty well, but now I kind of see this part here is a bit distracting. So what I'm just gonna do is zoom in on this and I wanted to make it as black as this side of the car. So I'm just gonna brush over a little bit here and just drop the exposure, just a touch. Don't wanna make it too unnatural, but maybe around here is good. So let's just see this mask without it. 
kind of see it's popping a bit there in the front. I like it better like that. So usually I might refine that a bit more, just remove um, around the edges, maybe a bit of the blur, but for now, I think I'm happy with that. So let's just see our before image and our after image. If you wanna get a good clean view, if you press L on your keyboard, kind of puts it into look mode and then press L again to go completely black screen. So you get a nice sense of your before and the after. So that is my edit of this GTCS, it was really fun to shoot and I hope you liked the video.